So we're just coming up to our 25th anniversary and it's a great time to reflect back on how we've got to where we are and the journey that we've been on. So Richview came into being in 1995 by my parents to try and work out what they were going to do next after selling another business and, and moving on. It brought the entire family onto the one aim of making the best quality sparkling wines in England. It's been a fascinating journey for us all and all come from it in very different ways, which has made it, I think, what it is really. And we're all very comfortable with what we're doing um, and still have a lot of energy to put into the business. Family is central to all that we do at Ridgeview. And we don't mean just the, the immediate family. Family is all throughout our business. You know, We've grown from a team of five to now a team of over 30 that all feel a part of the family. There's a family ethos in everything that we do. And we spread that word with all the customers that we work with too. There's a wonderful loyalty. These vines here, well, they're coming up for 25 years old, which is quite unbelievable, which means I've been involved with them for the majority of their lifespan so far. We have to do a lot of work by hand. This vine here will get seen to by a person with their bare hands and their eyes and using a bit of thought about 14 times every year. And harvesting, of course, is all done by hand. So there is a lot of care and attention needed to produce a good quality crop. So we've blended the wines. We've now got five stages left to go before it reaches your table. You can see with all the people that are involved, it really is a handcrafted process. It's a, it's a labour of love. At Ridgeview, we've had so many wonderful, memorable moments to celebrate. When we first started, it was all about making the best product that we could. Our first big international trophy was in the Decanter World Wine Awards for the best sparkling wine in the world. And we never thought that we could top that. My most memorable moment was receiving a call from my friend Tim to advise me that we'd been served at the Royal Banquet. I think that was just momentous. It was a huge, huge event and to have our wine used as the toast between the two nations was fantastic. We've now been served at four Royal Banquets, so at such special events as the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. We were all very surprised to be crowned the International Wine Spirit Competition Winemaker of the Year. It was perhaps one of the biggest achievements for the winery to date on the anniversary of the passing of our founder and my dad. He would be looking down on us and so proud of what we've done and we could be so proud of what we've managed to do and keeping that vision going. What makes Ridgeview so special from my perspective, and I think from people who tend to come and meet us and visit us, is the passion that comes from being a pioneer. It's that passion of trying something new and constantly challenging yourself and taking the next step and the next step when there isn't really anybody there to direct you precisely as to what that outcome might be. Where I see Ridgeview growing in the future is to become a part of the global international wine world. Then when people think about English sparkling wine, which is really growing significantly as a category, I want them to be thinking about Ridgeview. And I also see really, really exciting things happening in tourism at Ridgeview, growing to be a destination for people to come and enjoy. So it's a really exciting future for us sellers with a capacity of a million bottles, an area upstairs to enable us to finish the wines, riddle, disgorge, label, dispatch and provide much needed space elsewhere in the business to expand the winemaking side of the production too. Ridgeview is very much about maintaining quality, ethos, etc. not necessarily happen to be the very biggest producer there. Our focus is on the wines, making great wines and working with customers that we enjoy working with. And I think we don't want to lose the joy in what we do. Life is for celebrating. That was very much from the heart of the founders, mum and dad. And I think as a family, we love fun. We love celebration. And, and if for any reason there is to celebrate, we will celebrate. Welcome back everyone. I really love that. So without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Scarlett from Ridgeview Wine Estate, which is located in the beautiful Sussex countryside here in the UK. 
Hi. Hi, thank you, Hilary, for introducing me. So, um, as you mentioned, we are based in Sussex here in England, um, pretty much just outside of Brighton, which is on the coast, and we're at the bottom of the um, South Downs. So, we're in a nice little protected little bubble. Um, I am the Asleil and Hospitality Executive here at Ridgeview. Um, I've been living about three and a half years, um, and I started Ridgeview. Um, as kind of a retail and events coordinator. So I've seen lots of different parts of the business, um, including the events, the retail part, the sales part, the hospitality part. Um, and so, yeah, I've been here and, and kind of really found my feet in this uh, wonderful kind of family business. Um, so I'm here today to answer any questions that you have. Um, the English wine industry is a particularly exciting time at the moment. Um, it's still very much regarded as within its infancy. So roughly about 30 years and um, the English wine industry has um, kind of been evolving. Um, 2018 in terms of numbers we produced about 13 million bottles um, and there is lots of lots of room for growth so they're hoping by 2040 to be producing up to about 40 million bottles so there are um, yeah lots of wine producers now in England doing incredible amazing things. Um, us for Ridgeview we were founded uh, 25 years ago so this year we are celebrating our 25th anniversary, which is very exciting. Um, we're doing lots to celebrate that. But one of our biggest things that we have um, achieved this year is releasing a new wine to our range. So Ridgeview has consisted of um, six different wines for those 24, 25 years. Um, and we have just released a new wine to our range, which is 100% Chardonnay um, with a careful use of oak within it as well. So we launched that uh, about a week ago. So it's very new here at Ridgeview. It's received amazing feedback from many wine critics. Um, yeah, and that's one of our kind of most exciting things that we've got. That's all really exciting to hear. And sorry, everyone, that um, I'm introducing a new face here. Uh, I'm stepping in for Hillary um, as we didn't manage to get her back. Um, so, Scarlett, we do have questions, for, um, more questions from the audience. And people do want to know um, where you are exporting to. So, is there anywhere outside of the UK where people can find any of your wines? Uh, very much so, yes. So we are exporting currently um, about 20% of what we produce annually. Our biggest export is the States. Um, so our, our distributor over there is uh, Banville, who export to uh, many different states. Um, that's something, again, that we'll be kind of, you know, hoping to pick up again next year. It's been a bit tricky this year with traveling and, and managing to kind of get our feet on the ground in different countries, but definitely something we'll be working on next year. We also export to Finland, uh, Sweden, Czech Republic um, has, been, has been great this year, Singapore doing some really exciting things with the um, British beverage company over there. Um, and then we export to the Caribbean as well and yeah, a few other countries. I think we're, we're up to about 18, 19 different countries. Um, so yeah, the export market is, is doing great. Wow, that is really amazing and some exotic places there as well where you export to. Um, but for people who are able to, to visit you, do you do tours, um, tastings um, and how many people are you able to host, um, particularly in the current situation? Um, so yes, we are doing tours. Um, that's something we have done, um, I think, pretty much since we started here at Ridgeview, but obviously they have now kind of grown in terms of how often we offer tours and the capacity. So um, throughout the summer, we were doing tours nearly every day, um, three up to four at the weekend daily. Um, we have taken, we put the brakes on slightly at the moment because we are middle of harvest. So it is one of our busiest times here on the vineyard and in the winery. So the logistics of having people on site and forklifts and tractors and the pickers out on the vineyard is a bit of a, a challenge, health and safety wise. So we put a pause on our tours for now and they then restart in the next couple of weeks and they run right through the winter um, right up until next summer as well. Um, and they're already, I think, already starting to pick up for even the wintry months where it's a bit more miserable outside. People are still um, really keen to come and visit us here in the vineyard. Amazing. Um, so you mentioned the harvest there. Um, can you tell us something about this year's harvest? Is the 2021 going to be a good one? 
Uh, very much so. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. So um, the weather here, we, we had an amazing heat wave throughout um, August, uh, September time. So and very, very little rain. So we've ended up with a great quality in our grapes, but also very clean grapes as well. Um, in terms of the yields, they're slightly smaller compared to maybe 2018 and 2019, where we had um, probably one of our biggest yields um, ever. Um, slightly smaller, but quality is absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, we probably couldn't have asked for any better this year. It's been perfect. Very nice. Looking forward to that. Um, so people are asking about sustainability in the questions. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the Richview sustainability story? Yeah, so um, we are very much a company that's dedicated to sustainability. Um, it with the people, with the environment, the economics and all we do. Um, we audit our business against industry benchmarks and have invested in um, initiatives such as um, our own waste treatment. So we use a bio bubble um, and kind of regulate our own, our own waste treatment. We have cover crop um, and we use solar power as well. So um, as a second generation family business, we very much recognise that um, sustainability is key uh, to our success and it's definitely something that we are going to be developing on um, very much so in the coming years. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Angela and she asks, have you or would you offer a virtual tour of the vineyard um, with a virtual meet the vintner? Yes. Um, again, that's probably something else that we um, had to adapt slightly this year with the global climate is our tour offering. Uh, we did have to close to, to the public for um, a few months. And within that time, what we spent is we spent time putting together virtual tour and tasting packages. So we can now offer a virtual tour. We do like a behind the scenes here at Ridgeview all virtually, and we then host a tasting. And how that works is we can send out a package to um, whether it's a social event for you and your friends and family, or if it's for a business and it's a corporate event, uh, we send out the package direct to your clients or customers' homes, which you will choose kind of what wine you would like to taste, um, how many wines you'd like to taste as well. We send that out with um, tasting notes, and then we either can sign up to your uh, platforms or we use platforms such as Zoom and we will find a time that suits you and your group and we can host the virtual tasting uh, with you as well. So, yes, it's very much something we offer and becoming more popular as well. Fantastic. Um, so that really makes me taste some wine now. And actually, I'm not the only one. We have a question from Galit from Israel, and he asks, can you define your wines, um, the grapes, blends, um, acidity? Can you t tell us a little bit about that? Um, that's a great question. Um, I can't believe I haven't mentioned more about that already. It's a very important. Um, so we are um, one of the leading English sparkling wine producers in the UK. So we create traditional method sparkling wine, uh, which is your, your the same method that we'd, you, you'd use to create champagne. Um, and within that, we use three grape varieties. Chardonnay, um, which is a very popular grape variety you've probably all heard of, uh, Pinot Noir, and then a lesser known grape, which is called Pinot Mania. So we use one green grape, two red or black grapes, um, and our wines are either a blend of all three of those grapes, they all bring their own interesting characteristics um, and blend work perfectly as a blend. Um, or it might be like something with our new oak release wine that we've released this year as part of our 25th anniversary. It's 100% Chardonnay. Um, so it varies across the wines in terms of the percentage of each grape that we use within that. But those are the three that we focus on it and solely those three. Um, and now as a last question before we let you get on um, with, your, with your day, Scarlett, which one is your personal favourite? Um, for me, it'll have to be our Blanc de Blanc. Um, our Blanc de Blanc is 100% Chardonnay. Um, it's fantastic in terms of its acidity. So we make wines here in the UK. Um, the style is beautiful, kind of high, zesty acidity. The Blanc de Blanc being 100% Chardonnay um, 
really does have that lovely zestiness. It really makes your mouth water when you take a sip. Um, it's refreshing. It's beautiful. It's clean. Um, it's yeah. It's one hundred percent my uh, my top favourite. Sounds fantastic. Um, thank you so much for um, for joining us today and for answering all of the questions that people um, sent in. Um, and we do have um, a little more treat for people to watch more behind the scenes from your lovely vineyard now um, to, to end our session today. So thank you again and hope to thank see you. you soon. Hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for having me. Bye. Bye really fun to share with you a glimpse behind the scenes here at Ridgeview, sharing the journey from grape to glass with a couple of the most wonderful people we have working here, our vineyard manager Matt and my brother Simon, our winemaker. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Matt. I'm the vineyard manager here at Ridgeview Wine Estate and I've been working here since 2002. We're standing in this amazing block of Chardonnay. And why is it amazing? We've got the South Downs just over there. During the growing season, if we get bad weather coming in from the Southwest, some rain or something like that, you can see the clouds, they start forming and bubbling up literally above us. And by the time the rain's falling, it's kind of, it's gone, it's over there. So that's one thing. We've got a really nice sort of microclimate going on here. We're south facing. It's fairly well sheltered, quite nicely protected from the prevailing wind. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful patch of land, this, for growing grapes on. So we're, you know, I get quite enthusiastic about that. So we've got Chardonnay here. It's 25 years old, one of the oldest blocks of Chardonnay in the country. We've got some Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier in our other field, which is just through the woods there. Pinot Meunier, not so well known. Pinot Noir, I'm sure you've all heard of. They can make red wine, but you can also make white wine from them because the colour when you're red wine making comes from the skins. And because we're pressing them gently, all we get is white juice coming from them. The vines are growing in this amazing, it's almost like being in the Mediterranean at the moment. Beautiful weather, really warm and sunny, and we're just coming up to a key stage of flowering. So what I'll do is I'll explain what, what leads up to flowering and what we do after flowering. Let's imagine we're in the middle of winter, December time, and me and my assistant and a couple of other guys will be out here pruning the vines, which takes us right the way through to about the end of January. So we prune them. We then have to tie these canes down. These are our fruit bearing canes. And we tie those down in March, just in time for bud burst, which happens, can happen any time in April. The buds start swelling as the temperatures start to warm up a little bit. But of course, the temperatures in the day might warm up a little bit, but at night it can still get very cold. So while the buds are developing and they start to shoot, or bud burst as we call it, um, we have to come out and protect against any late frosts that happen during the spring. So we have a number of bougies. I'm sure you might have seen pictures of them being lit up on, on social media and so forth. That's what we do at night during the spring is we light these bougies and it just stops the temperature getting to freezing levels and damaging, damaging the new shoots. From that point on, they grow really fast and uh, we're now just about at flowering, another really important time of year. If flowering is nice in this sort of weather, it means we get a nice big crop. The timing of flowering is very important because it helps us to plan when we're going to be doing our harvesting as well. And all being well, we'll have lovely weather for our flowering, get a nice big healthy crop. And what happens then is the canopy continues to grow and we have to trim the tops and trim the sides and we have to keep it really neat because whatever sunshine we do get, we need it to get on these, as many as these leaves and get these leaves working as, as effectively as possible. After that point, the little clusters here start forming grapes and you'll see them expanding throughout July and August, and that's when they start to ripen. We're in the ripening stage, we're then constantly monitoring the fruit, checking how much sugar there is, how the acidity, the acidity reduces, so we're measuring that so that we know that we're at the optimum time to harvest the grapes, and then we send them on their way, wave goodbye to them, off to Simon in the winery.
Hi, I'm Simon Roberts, head winemaker at Ridgeview. I've been here for 25 years now. I joined mum and dad when we planted our first vineyard all that time ago. So I'm going to take you on the second part of the journey for the grapes. Matt's explained how we grow the grapes and bring them up to the winery. I'm going to explain the second half of that journey. So they're hand-picked and then we hand-load them into our presses. They go through a very slow, gentle press, about three hours. We get 55% of the juice. We then take that juice, put it into all these different tanks. We have lots of small tanks, so we keep every variety from every vineyard, from every grower, separate up until blending. So we take the juice, we add some yeast if we have to, we'll add some sugar, we'll ferment that to 10.5% alcohol. We'll go through a couple other processes, and then it's ready to be bottled. So this is our bottling line. So we've turned the juice into wine. That's at 10.5% alcohol. Now at this point, we'll add the yeast and the sugar for the second fermentation. So we take an empty bottle, it goes onto the line. This line runs at 4,000 bottles an hour. So it keeps the team pretty busy keeping up with it. The bottles are rinsed. We add the wine with some yeast and some sugar. It then has a crown cap, like a beer bottle cap. And this is where the second fermentation takes place. Now we've added the yeast. Okay, so now we're in the cellar. So we were actually one of the first wineries to have a dedicated underground cellar. This is where we can age all our wines for the second fermentation. So down here is a constant temperature between 14 and 15 degrees throughout the year. The wines now, they've gone through the second fermentation. Part of that process is the carbon dioxide, which is held in the bottle. That gives us our bubbles, all our sparkles. When that fermentation's finished, which takes about three months, the yeast will settle out and create a bed along the bottom of the bottle. And this is where we get all those flavors that we associate with sparkling wine. So it will start off as a yeasty flavor, and then it will develop into that bready brioche and then onto toast. So our wines down here will age for anywhere between three years for our limited releases to 10 years for our magnums. So now we're in winery three, and this is where we finish all the wine. So the wines come up from the cellar where it's been aging, it's come up horizontal. We now need to get rid of all the sediment and put the cork in. So it goes through a process called riddling. So the bottles are turned left and right and slowly tipped upside down over five days. All the sediment is then rocked into the neck of the bottle. It then goes on to our degorging line. So this conveyor belt, we load the bottles onto it. It sits above a glycol bath, which is chilled down to minus 20. It takes 12 minutes to get from one end of the conveyor belt to the other. When it gets to that end, there's a plug of ice with all the sediment trapped in the bottle. It's lifted the right way up, the glycol's rinsed off, and then it goes onto our degorging line. So at that point, it's the right way up. There's six bar of pressure in here. The first, first rotation, the crown cap's flicked off, the pressure in the bottle, pushes a plug of ice out, you have a clear bottle of wine. Second rotation, we take a little bit of wine out, we add some sugar solution. Because of that second fermentation, all the sugars turn to alcohol, so it's a very dry wine, so we just need that sugar to balance the wine. Then goes on to the last station where we add the cork, we add the crown muesli that you associate with sparkling wine. Then each bottle is agitated to homogenize the sugar in the wine solution. And then it's rested for three months on cork before it gets ready for labelling. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes tour at Ridgeview. We're all really excited to welcome you here in the future where you can come and drink in the view with us. Cheers. <laughs>